Talking about 400 years ago, and because of it, black Americans come out to other countries with that brainwashed system, feeling that just because someone else has a different color or calls you a black sister or calls you the N-word, there's something wrong. Why? It's a brainwashed system that has been programmed into the black Americans. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I hope you well today. So first, I'll, as I always do, shout out to all my fans from the United States, shout out to all my friends from the United Kingdom, shout out to all my South African friends, shout out to all my Kenyan friends, shout out to all my Ugandan friends and the African diaspora in its all. So today I'm going to talk about a sensitive topic. It's about a South African, it was something like a podcast in which they were trying to talk, but then... Um, I'm sorry for the noise. I mean, an African setup, and we have people who are praying at night, and totally understandable. But again, I have to talk to you. So, as I was saying, this is an important aspect, and um, we are going to address this issue because this is a South African lady who is trying to debunk what African Americans believe or the blacks in the African diaspora believe. So, the issue is. This lady is trying to explain that, you know, Afri uh, African-Americans are over complaining about things like they should not complain about racism. Instead, they should focus with their life. They should focus with things which are important. And she gives two perspectives. She gives a perspective when she's an African-American and she also gives a perspective when she is a South African, which shows that there are some loopholes that I'm going to tell you after you watch this video. So let's watch the video together and come back. If I'm as an American, not as an African, why is it that there's always a reminder of slaverism with Americans, black people especially? Why is it flogged? This, we're talking about 400 years ago, and because of it, black Americans come out to other countries with that brainwash system feeling that just because someone else has a different color or calls you a black sister or calls you the n-word there's something wrong why it's a brainwash system that has been programmed into the black americans so when you guys when you when americans come out or they want to talk about south koreans okay take for example the mermaid film okay it, like hello what is there to have a black mermaid there no something is wrong americans are always complaining about racism 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 stop talking about racism and the racism won't be there the mindset is from america to come into south korea to come into an asian country why is it different for i'm wearing the shoes of an american as an american i will promote there is racism whether anyone likes it or not but as an african i don't recognize that i just watch the media about the topic and since i've been here i haven't really in fact when i look at koreans when they look at me what i see is their curiosity rather i'm used to seeing whites but i'm not used to seeing blacks it's a curiosity so they would definitely want to touch their hair they would definitely want to look at us differently it's our duty to educate them of our race of who we are and that's what i've been doing as an african person but as a black person the first thing i'm thinking about is my american passport and second racism does exist so welcome back to this channel and um so the following are the things that the girl might have overlooked one is as i was trying to watch the video i tried to jot down um the, the loop alls that she might have overlooked so the first one is um the girl only gave the single perspective and not what all the blacks go through because on her perspective she only thought that you know getting a passport and getting out of the United States was the only solution. What of the people who can't get out from the United States? What about the people who don't want to come back to Africa? You know, it's not everyone that always want to come back to Africa. What about the people who will remain in the United States? Because if you only say talking about getting the visa and coming back to, you know, to, to Africa, because maybe probably a lot of majority of Africans, Americans and other people in the diaspora want to come to you know africa so is it that all africans african americans want to come to africa i don't think so because there are a group of african americans who don't want to come to africa and this perspective might not apply to all african americans so there is something that she overlooked number two something that i also noted down is what it was empathy you know um it is always important to recognize the struggles that people go through and it's so sad that she was never empathetic with you know the african-americans 
Um, in her mind, she thinks that, you know, African Americans are always complaining. Same as other people who believe in the stereotypes that, you know, African Americans are people who are always complaining. They are, they are always over complaining and they don't focus on things that can build the United States. They are always complaining. So I don't think that if somebody expresses how they feel, there's a problem with that. I don't think so. I think you can't be raised in South Africa and maybe if she was raised in South Africa because there is apartheid, you know, um, the apartheid regime that happened in the United, not in the United States, but in the South Africa. But I believe the lady is talking. She is a person who has, uh, she has been raised when, you know, the apartheid leadership has ended. So I don't think that she has that much experience of about something which you call racism, or if she knows, she's just ignorant about it. Because I think being empathetic, uh, being empathetic is understanding the struggles that you know a given community goes through, and that involves the daily problems, the uh, the things that you know they talk about, um, everything that they want the media to hear about them. And if she's seeing that this is not right for them to do, I think she is not empathetic, or if it's not so. Um, she did it knowingly, or if I can say that. So um, generally, I do believe that everyone has the freedom of expressing what they feel. And nobody should be persecuted or nobody should be judged because they tend to think that in a given way. You know, people will always say that, you know, African-Americans are sensitive people. And I'm also here to debunk that. And there is nothing like a sensitive person if you step on someone's wound they will react you know and people's reaction is different some people might react uh by fighting some people might react violently so it it all depends with somebody's reaction some people might decide to react differently so i don't think that there are people who are you know overreacting about something they are nothing like sensitivity. They are not people who are sensitive. African Americans are not sensitive. They are just like any other person who is trying to express how they feel. They are they're just like any other person who is trying to express their, you know, their, 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 their atrocities that they face where they are. You know, because you can't be coming from a different place and you want to judge a person from a different place. At least stay there for quite some time. Or so being raised as a child, understand the, the systemic racism which is happening in the schools, understand everything which is happening in the schools so that you can come up with a solid conclusion. I would also debunk that. Number three, the third thing in which the girl also overlooked was um, cultural sensitivity. You know, they don't understand why the African Americans don't like the word and the N word. You know, I feel like um, it's kind of a betrayal to use the same word because that's how they were called by the colonizers. Not only the colonizers, the oppressors, the colonizers for people who are in Africa, but for the African Americans and the blacks in the diaspora, I think the N word symbolizes, uh, you know, the, the, the betrayal because. Um, and it's a problem because most of the blacks, not most, but some of the blacks still use the word, you know, understand. And if a white person uses the N-word, it's a problem to them because it reminds them what happened during slavery. And it's something that they are told is wrong. So if a person, you know, understanding context by the use of words, it's also important. Even if we take out the rest thing away, I think understanding the use of words in a given context, it's a problem. It's something which also applies in, in Kenya where I am. Because in a given community, you're not allowed to use some words to them. It's something which is uncalled for. It's a taboo to them. So the N-word for the African-American understanding their cultural sensitivity, it's something which the lady should have, you know, installed in her mind. She could have tried to do some precise historical background where the N-word came from. She should have tried to find out where the N-word came from. I mean, just jumping to conclusion without having you know, doing your research about some things, you might hurt somebody. That's I think the use of word with, with context come to. And it's important, not even for the African Americans, even also you try to find out whether the use of some given words in a place, it's, it's a taboo. A word might be acknowledged in a, in a given place, at the same time a word might not be, you know, be welcomed in a given place. So some words mean something different to other people, so she also need to understand that. Another thing is the historical context that she also overlooked, something to do with, you know, 
she i think i've also said it i just to i just want to reinstate what i've just said so historical context is also um, important understanding what slave legacy is happening to the african americans and the blacks in the diaspora today it's also important because you haven't gone to an american school you haven't gone to maybe an american cafeteria just try to experience how life is just to be a black person you know and it's not all about being black but you as a person i'm talking about intersectionality something to do with race um something to do with economic status how are they treating you as a person um these are things that we should look out um the uh, the slavery um legacy how is it affecting the black people even today and try to find out why they complaining rather than just jumping to conclusion you know saying that no complaining is a bad thing complaining is not a bad thing because you need to hear out how you feel as a person and if they say that the government it's not hearing what they say they have to stand up for themselves as you know as the black community that's why we have the black lives matter these are you know self initiative groups which help the blacks find justice for the things that happened remember the year it was themselves so understanding the historical context of slave legacy in its place today in the united states it's important and these are things that the lady has overlooked and also she has overlooked something to do with freedom of expression everyone and the law even states it everyone has freedom to speak everyone can speak i mean say what's on your mind um say what you feel is right say what you feel is wrong so freedom of expression freedom of speech these are important things and that's just a way in which the black community express themselves if something is wrong something is wrong somebody is allowed to express how they feel you know i tend to say that it's not like we are practicing what is called um i don't know this type of government where is there is only one person who rules all people that everyone's opinion is not heard so there is nothing like that everyone has a freedom of to express what they feel it's right or what they feel is wrong and everyone should have the exact equal place when rendering what they feel like um i think everyone's you know everyone's 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 feeling is important what they say it's important you know and hearing people out is another thing which is also important if i'm an african i can't hear what my brother or my sister african american is telling me um it's something which is wrong you understand so i think understanding the freedom of speech it's something the lady also overlooked and um the last thing which also overlooked is something called intersectionality understanding that it's not even about race or about even the black what they feel like it's about your status as a person what's happening to you in the united states you know what's what about black women what are the challenges are they facing this is something that she never looked at she just generalized things and felt like you know um african americans are complaining so guys tell me what you think in the comment section this is Eugene, the African kid. I'm sorry to say that I had to change my name from Eugene from Kenya due to some reasons. Um, okay, let me just say it. I could receive some people confusing me with Evans from Kenya, so I had to put a boundary between the names. I'm Eugene, the African child or the African kid. I made to decide. And the name that I'm using right now, it's a mistake that happened to me while I was trying to type through my 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 phone um writing my name and then i think something just happened and my youtube just i don't know it triggered something else and i couldn't just go back and save the name that i was intending to put so guys just bear with the name eugene the g it doesn't mean anything but my name will be eugene eugene you know the african kid so so guys if you're watching this video for the first time and you felt like um i talked i talked some sense um also tell me in the comment section what you feel about this situation is it something um worth discussing or is it something that we can just overlook as you know as people as human being so kindly if you're watching this video for the first time ensure sub um consider subscribing to my channel it's a small channel and i'm just growing i'm here asking you if you can consider subscribing to my channel please subscribe i'll really appreciate this is eugene from kenya as you know always peace love and harmony Salute.